flying with rage over the tiny size of airplane seats. The FAA says it's being flooded with thousands of complaints. CNN's Pete Muntian explains why the government agrees and thinks it must fix this shrinking seat problem for safety's sake. Luxury is what flying was supposed to be. But these days, leg room is shrinking as passengers are getting larger. Things are definitely getting too small on planes. We're dying. And it doesn't matter what airline it is. I can't imagine seats or aisles being smaller than they are today. Now, the Federal Aviation Administration is considering whether to stop airlines from making seats smaller. Back to any back to any, leave, leave everything, come this way. The agency is under a congressional mandate to study whether seat size could slow an evacuation. But in 26,000 public comments, many focused on comfort. The idea is that the more people you can jam into a plane, uh, the more money you'll make. Flyers Rights President Paul Hudson says airlines are trying to squeeze out more profit. This week, six U.S. senators told the FAA to act urgently and not wait for seats to get any smaller. So I decided to put airlines to the test. Two things necessary for this little experiment of our own. A ticket and a tape measure. On this United Airlines flight, legroom was right at the industry standard, 30 inches. But it all depends on the airline. Legroom can get even tighter on ultra low cost carriers. It's tight. 27 inches is what we saw on this Allegiant Airlines flight. Flyers Rights proposes a minimum of 32 inches legroom and seats that are wider. Dimensions it says would fit 90% of Americans. That would make a huge difference. In its comment to the FAA, the airline industry's top lobby said it would not compromise on safety, but told the government to stay out of regulating passenger comfort. The FAA and the Department of Transportation declined our interview requests. Their position to date has been how uncomfortable you are is between you and the, and the air carrier. That was CNN's Pete Muntian reporting. And it's a timely discussion with the Thanksgiving travel season starting up any minute now. According to the Vacationers Annual Thanksgiving Travel Survey, 43% of us here in the U.S. say we're going to travel for a turkey day. The U.S. may soon have a tool to fight some respiratory tract infections caused by RSV. A, pre a preventative treatment for the ailment was approved by the European Commission today. A submission was sent to the Food and Drug Administration, and if it gets the OK, it may be available in the U.S. sometime next year. So far, RSV is causing many pediatric hospital beds to fill up nationwide. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention says most children most children get RSV sometime before the age of two. It's often a mild infection, but it can be serious for some infants. This is the first time this type of treatment has been available to protect children all year of the first year of life. The Biden White House will release $1.5 billion from its Inflation Reduction Act to help upgrade laboratories nationwide. White House climate officials include Energy Secretary Jennifer Granholm and Senior Advisor John Podesta, who will be on hand for the announcement this afternoon in Chicago. This financial boost is meant to improve future scientists, according to administration officials. Also today, the White House is releasing a report on how to achieve its goal of net zero status for greenhouse gas emissions by the year 2050. Pfizer and BioNTech officials say people who get the new bivalent booster for COVID-19 have a stronger immune response against the BA4 and BA5 subvariants. That's compared to those who didn't get the shot at all. In a statement, the drug maker says the bivalent booster roughly quadruples the levels of neutralizing antibodies from its variants in people over the age of 55 in comparison to that, remember that first vaccine. Pfizer and BioNTech say that they are still holding bigger clinical trials of these new boosters. Health officials advise people you need to get boosted this fall in order to prevent a possible surge in COVID-19 cases. Okay, this is gross. A new study suggesting picking your nose could increase your risk of dementia and Alzheimer's disease. Griffith University researchers found that bacteria can travel through the olfactory nerve in the nasal cavity and into your brain. Researchers say the cells in the brain respond to the bacteria by creating markers that are a telltale tell sign of Alzheimer's disease. The scientists are now working to prove that that same pathway exists in humans. They're warning that 
Picking your nose can damage the nose's lining, and that could increase how many bacteria can travel that same path to your brain. Ugh. Yeah, more reasons to leave the bat in the cave to the tissue. And there you go. Keep, keep your hands uh, That's out of a your really nose. nice way of putting it. <laughs> I'm just trying here. Leave it to the tissues. All right, now to a gloomy looking sky here and a potential cold front coming through. Justin, what can you tell us? Uh, well, uh, we're looking for that front to come through sometime this evening between 6 and 8 p.m. That's the window. We believe it'll move through San Antonio. The question will be, does it generate any storms? And chances aren't great, honestly. Uh, I've seen a lot of rain or a lot of storm activity here around San Antonio. We are seeing a few showers right now, and these are moving very quickly off to the north. You'll get a quick splash and dash with some of this activity, but it's not going to amount to much rain. And really, we'll start to see most of these showers push east as we go later into the afternoon. And the, looking at the satellite picture, I think this kind of tells the story. Uh, you see all the cloud cover here around San Antonio, but starting to see some breaks. And I do think we'll see some sun this afternoon. And then there is the front. You can see it very clearly here with a line of clouds and a few showers trying to develop right along that line. 81 degrees at the airport, 79 Kerrville, 80 in Hondo. It's already 86 in Catula with sun there. 82 in Kennedy, 84 in Gonzales. And a little closer look at Bear County, right around 80 degrees. But the more sun we see this afternoon, the more those temperatures will warm. I think we could go as high as 86, 87, depending on uh, how much sun that we get between now and when that front arrives. KSAT 12 hour forecast. We'll go partly cloudy by 3, 4 o'clock. Temperatures in the mid 80s and then the rain chances go up a little bit as that front comes through. 30% chance, but don't cancel your evening plans. Just be prepared for a storm or two and these will quickly work their way east of San Antonio by 8, 9 o'clock and then we'll be looking at some gusty winds behind that. Some gusts up to 30 miles per hour possible later tonight, but the good news here, those winds calm by Saturday morning and the weekend looks fantastic. We'll have another look at that forecast for you in just a couple minutes. Thank you, Justin. It's a new concoction you probably wouldn't have thought of, but if you love coffee as much as this guy does, why not experiment? And that's what he did. And he put together a cup of fried coffee. Hmm. Let's see how it tastes next. San Antonio FC is ready to play for the Western Conference Championship in a battle of two great teams. Larry breaks that all down, coming up. An accused scammer tried to catch them all, but police ended up catching him instead. How Pokemon cards were used to take thousands of dollars from victims all across several states. A man in Tulsa is behind bars for allegedly selling fake Pokemon cards on Craigslist to people all across the country. Tulsa, Tulsa police say that Michael McCoy arrested after a tip that came in from a victim in Hawaii who had paid $3,000 for what he thought was a great deal. Well, police had already been looking into this case for months and they got a call from that victim in Hawaii. That person agreed to work with investigators and they set up a fake number to trick McCoy into selling him cards again. Well, police were then able to arrest McCoy when he went to the post office to mail those cards out. It really became something bigger than I had any clue about. And it was like instant that I knew. I was like, these are terrible quality. These are totally fraudulent. Officials say in all, McCoy was able to scam people out of $12,000, including in Arizona, Colorado, Ohio, and right here in Texas. He now faces four counts of false pretense under $1,000 or con game. Okay, when it comes to fried foods, we Texans have seen it and eaten it all. But what about fried drinks? Now, one man decided to give the idea a shot by frying up coffee beans. As CNN's Jeannie Moose found out, the results were surprising. Our juicy you do it to chicken, you do it to fries, but why would anyone do it to coffee beans? Deep fried? All right, good luck, little coffee. Ooh, I thought there'd be more fizz. James Hoffman Again, is a coffee geek, author of books like The World Atlas of Coffee. He didn't expect deep fried coffee would be. Good to the last drop. James was happy with a steady Colorized. drip of progress. Ooh, going brown. We're going brown. At 10 minutes in, he didn't know if the That's beans were fried yet. enough. Coffee. There's not a, a large body of literature there yet. But after a total fry time of 14 and a half minutes, 
We're not looking too greasy. Even when he got up close and personal, this guy is a true coffee fan. There's something kind of weird about the fact that holding a fan over some freshly deep fried coffee doesn't feel that weird to me. Grinding the deep fried coffee beans seemed normal. So was the filtering process. The color's looking okay. It's looking like we made coffee. And finally, the moment of truth. That's good. It's weirdly good. We'll see Not so happens. good was when he tried to make espresso using the deep fried beans. That's, that's disgusting. At least he blames the beans and not, like the guys in the old Folgers commercials, the wife. Yes, honey, your coffee's undrinkable. But if you could do one thing for me. What? Try to do something about your coffee. This coffee is criminal. Honey, you killed the petunias. At least no petunias were harmed in the testing of deep fried coffee. Genie Mose. It's not greasy, it's sort of soft and almost buttery. CNN. Rich, but not yucky and fatty and ugh. New York. Not, not too gassy, I would say. A little gas, a little gas. Wow. What are your thoughts there? Would you try it? I don't like coffee in, under any condition. I don't like to smell coffee, and I'll bet your fried coffee doesn't smell too great either. I'm a big believer, and Justin, I don't know how you feel about this, but giving everything a shot, give it a try. I really don't understand anything that just happened there. I'm, <laughs> I'm confused, uh, but whatever. Yeah, I, I guess I would try it. I'm not a coffee fan myself. Uh, 81 degrees so far today, 73 was the low this morning. So we're above average in both regards. It's gonna be a warm above average day, but this is the time of year where we can see big swings in temperature. It's been as warm as 94, that was back in 1988, or as cold as 28, it's back in 1991. Cold front slides through tonight. Does that cool us down for the weekend? We'll take a look at the numbers coming up. All right, we made it to the end of the week, Friday. We got a cold front coming through and the weekend's looking great. I mean, what can we ask for? I mean, it's like a birthday gift. <laughs> it's like perfect. <laughs> but it's somebody's birthday today too, huh? Happy birthday, JP. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> yes, uh, you're gonna enjoy this weekend forecast. It does look pretty, pretty awesome. Today is a little sticky out there. If you've been outside, the air is thick. It has led to a few showers. Uh, we haven't picked up a whole lot of rain. I mean, if you get one of these showers, it lasts about uh, a minute or two, moves right along. As we look outside with live cam, it is still cloudy by the airport. 81 degrees there, 80 at Stinson, 81 Kelly, 79 rain off. A good southerly wind right now, anywhere from 10 to 20 miles per hour, but gusting higher than that. So we're going to get gusty southerly winds out ahead of this front. Then once the front moves through, we'll get some gusty northwesterly winds. So it is going to be fairly windy today. And speaking of that, uh, gusts already up to 39 in Midland and Marfa. So a lot of wind out across parts of West Texas where there are wind advisories in place. Our wind gusts may not be as strong, but it is still going to be windy tonight. Uh, once that front passes by and we can see it very clearly here right there with the visible satellite picture, a thin line of clouds, but also a couple showers trying to develop right along the front. Then as you get further north with better dynamics, there are more thunderstorms starting to erupt. And oh, by the way, a little bit of snow across the Texas Panhandle. There are flakes flying up there around Amarillo. It's cold enough there for that. So it gives you an idea of just how dynamic the system is. Unfortunately, as we've been talking about the last couple of days, it's just a little too far north to give us any good rain chances. And I mentioned some of those light showers trying to develop right along the front. We see that there around Sonora and uh, not much in Valverde County yet. It's possible we could see a couple pop-up showers, but it's not until this front gets to around San Antonio that more robust storms will get going. And the big question is, uh, will San Antonio see any of those storms? We'll be right on the edge. I don't know that we will. There is a scenario in which we don't get any rain as far as thunderstorm activity along that front here in San Antonio. You still see that we've got clouds hanging around, but some breaks off to the west, and these clouds in general are starting to kind of break up a little bit. So I do think we see some sun this afternoon. Let's walk you through the forecast here. So 4 o'clock, not much there. Again, maybe a shower or two right along the front. Then as we get to 7 p.m., this is when the model starts to develop some bigger storms right along the boundary. But generally north of San Antonio, this particular model does not have any rain here in town. Once the front passes you by, which could be around 7 o'clock here in San Antonio, then gusty winds out of the northwest kick in, gusts to 30 possible. By 9 o'clock, the storms are starting to move into our eastern counties. 
And this is when the threat for severe weather starts to pick up a little bit. So Friday night football games in places like Gonzales, Carnage City, we will have to watch with these storms moving through. And then by 11 p.m. at midnight, all of the rain is beginning to move out of our area and we're all looking at those gusty winds. Good news here, those winds die down by tomorrow morning and the clouds clear out and Saturday afternoon looks perfect. We'll get blue skies, temperatures in the 70s, low humidity, just the way we like it. Severe weather risk for this evening on a scale of one to five, about a two for our eastern counties. That's generally east of I-35. The main threat will be wind gusts up to 60 miles per hour with some of the stronger storms. And as I said last half hour, the risk for severe weather has now been increased by the Storm Prediction Center up here across parts of northeast Texas and Oklahoma and Arkansas. So this is an area and you don't see this risk put out all that often. This is an area that likely will see an outbreak of severe weather, but well to our north and east. If you're traveling in that direction, uh, you will want to keep a close eye on the forecast. 84, 2 o'clock, 86, 3 p.m. And then this evening, we'll bring the rain chances up just a little bit as that front comes through. 30% chance about 6 to 8 p.m. here in San Antonio. Then after that, it gets windy. 73, 10 o'clock, 70 by 11 p.m. with some of those gusty northwesterly winds. 78 tomorrow and clear. 84 with a few clouds by the afternoon on Sunday. And then next week, partly cloudy skies. A slight chance for some showers on Monday. Thank you, Justin. Thank you, sir. All right, now, Larry, yesterday was a Houston Phillies showdown, yep. obviously the World Series, but also <laughs> on the gridiron. Yeah, so the Astros did their part bumming out Philadelphia fans, but the Houston Texans <laughs> did not. But still, the game was a lot closer than what many thought it would be, but some turnovers again by the Texans turned out to be costly. Plus, San Antonio FC is pumped, and they are ready to go on Sunday coming up. Yeah, it's about execution. Um, you know, Colorado has good players. We respect them, but we don't fear them. Connor Maloney and SAFC have their eyes on Colorado Springs and big board sports. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. The Houston Texans played the Eagles close last night, but still they lost to the only undefeated team left in the NFL. First quarter, Davis Mills finds tight end Tegan Quatoriano, two yards, and the Texans go up seven to nothing. Late second quarter now, Texans down seven when Mills scrambles out of the pocket and he fires to Chris Moore, 13-yard touchdown, and this game is tied at 14-all, your halftime score. Third quarter, the Eagles take the lead for good. Jalen Hurts to A.J. Brown in the end zone, and it's 21-14 Philly. That touchdown a result of a Davis Mills interception. Eagles win in Houston 29-17, improving to 8-0. and We knew who we were playing. You know, some people will, uh, will argue the best team in football right now in NFL. I thought our guys uh, played hard from my start, start to finish. You know, we didn't always play smart football, and we, there's some mistakes we have to uh, eliminate. But uh, like the way they fought, just go out there, keep straining to sustain drives, um, limit penalties, and limit turnovers. And I mean, if we do that, I think we can play with anyone. The 1-6-1 one, one Texans will next play Sunday the 13th at the New York Giants. San Antonio FC will be one step closer to United Soccer League Championship title if they can get by Colorado Springs Switchbacks FC this Sunday in the Western Conference Finals. That's after head coach Alan Marcina, goalkeeper Jordan Farr, and defender Mitchell Tainer were all named finalists for the 2022 USL Championship Awards. SAFC tied the league record for most wins at 24, road wins with 13, and shutouts with 17. But all that won't matter if they can't get by the Switchbacks on Sunday night. Two very, very good teams, two contrasting styles. Uh, it will come down to who's able to execute you know, consistently throughout the game. It's really difficult to beat a team three times in a season, especially a team as good as Colorado. So it's going to be a fight. It's going to be a bunch of good players going at each other, a bunch of great teams. So it's going to be a great atmosphere, and it's, uh, yeah, it's going to be a great game. But we just got to execute, and you know, hopefully everything will fall into place. San Antonio hopes to celebrate again Sunday night at Toyota Field. They will host the switchback starting at 7.30 p.m. Congratulations to Smithson Valley offensive lineman Colton Thomason, who was honored by the All-American Bowl during a ceremony at Smithson Valley High School. Thomason is a four-star recruit and verbally committed to Texas A&M. He will play in the annual East versus West matchup on Saturday, January 7, 2023 in the Alamo Dome. And it's game day for the Spurs. They're at home tonight to host the LA Clippers at 7 at the AT&T Center. No word yet on the Spurs' updated injury report, but Kawhi Leonard is out for the Clippers because he's dealing with a knee issue.
oh, hopefully we can get back on track with the Spurs. And, you know, <laughs> exactly. Like you said, a 43-point loss, the Raptors, would, a very good team. Very good team indeed. It does not look That's good. a lot of points. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for that, Larry. We'll be right back. Hello, everyone. These are your top headlines from Cheddar News. Fidelity Investments launching a commission-free crypto trading product for retail investors. The service called Fidelity Crypto will allow investors to buy and sell Bitcoin and Ether. Fidelity follows Robinhood and Binance.us in offering commission-free crypto trading. Meanwhile, all you Powerball players, your next chance to win is Saturday night, and the jackpot is now an estimated $1.5 billion. You'll want a lump sum. You'll get $746 million. Still not too bad. There have been not 39 consecutive drawings since August without a win. Winner, so good luck. And Jeff Bezos is interested in purchasing the Washington Commanders, a source telling People Magazine Bezos looking to buy after current owners announced that they were exploring options to sell the NFL team. Now, Bezos is considering partnering with Jay-Z, according to a source. The rapper previously owned a stake in the Brooklyn Nets. And that's your Cheddar News Update. I'm Baker Machado coming to you from Cheddar Studios in Lower Manhattan. Temperatures are quickly making their way into the 80s. We're going to be in the mid 80s this afternoon. Some breaks in those clouds and we'll be watching that front as it moves a little bit closer to San Antonio. We think between 6 and 8 p.m. and it's right along that front where we could see a few storms pop up. If we do, there's a risk, especially east of San Antonio, to see uh, a couple of severe storms. I think the wind is pretty small here in town and uh, most everything will be moving out by again 8 p.m. and then gusty winds behind the front. Beautiful weather tomorrow. Low humidity on Saturday. We will see a few more clouds by Sunday and maybe a few showers popping up Monday morning with the more cloud cover next week. But have the KSAT weather app with you tonight. And if anything does pop up, we'll be here for you. We'll let you know and you have access to the radar and the most updated forecast by the meteorologist here at KSAT on the KSAT weather app. Guys. Yeah, set your alarm to set your clock back. We got rain chances, beautiful weekend, and we get extra sleep. And it's your birthday. Maybe that's why things are all lining up. I'm telling you, lucky boy. <laughs> Appreciate that, guys. Uh, SA Live starts in about right three to now. Celebrate San Antonio. Coming to you live from Historic Market Square. This is SA Live. Oh, happy Thursday. Well, they have achieved zen at this Gonzaga Event Center, and we're going to learn how you can harness your chi, too. Good afternoon. I'm Fiona Gorsiza. Well, we have a whole show packed with tips and tricks for healthy living for our seniors today on our Gonzaga Medical Group Takeover Show, and we want to kick things off with a shout-out to the seniors in our lives. So you can give a shout-out to any of the senior citizens in your life. Just post a photo of maybe your grandparents, your parents, aunts, uncles, even yourself as a senior. Tag us at SA Live KSAT on Facebook and Twitter, and we'd love to see a few of those a little later in the show. You're going to be seeing a number on your the top right corner of your screen during the show today. That's the number to Gonzaga Medical Group. They have the answers to your questions about Medicare enrollment. So you see it right there. So dial it if you have any questions. The annual enrollment period for Medicare starts on October 15th and runs through December 7th. That's tomorrow, uh, October 15th. Gonzaga Medical Group is answering calls at 210-960-8956 or you can visit the website gonzaga.com slash say yes. Well, we're getting things off to a healthy start with fall gardening. It's great to keep you active, and if you plant your veggies and fruits, it will help you eat healthy too. Here with tips and tricks to help you grow and eat healthy is Natalie Ramos, extension agent with Texas A&M AgriLife. Welcome, welcome. Thank you for having me. All right, so what are we doing first? Because this is all about container gardening, right? Right, yes, and it's super easy to grow just about any fall time vegetable in a container, believe it or not. And so I brought some examples live here. Um, we have some kale, some Swiss chard, and over there, it's the star of the show, we're gonna be using it with our salad today. It's red leaf lettuce. And these can all be grown in a container, actually, and, and you don't have to spend too much money on it. You can, I was gonna say, you can yes. use pretty inexpensive containers, right? Exactly. Um, you can even get a pail from your local grocery store or home hardware store, too, and cut some holes at the bottom. It's all about the drainage, really. So a lot of these can be planted in there. Um, also, some that I don't have with us, Brussels sprouts are really easy to grow in containers. You can also 
also do carrots from seeds. Just make sure it's deep enough. That way you can get a nice big carrot. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much all you that's can That's right, because just depending on what you're growing depends on the size of the container <laughs> exactly. and you're good to go. Yes. All right, so we've got the, the salad already kind of started. What do we need to do? So it's already chopped mm -hmm. up and ready to go. So we have the ingredients here. Since apples are also in season, um, I brought green apple. So we're going to chop that up nice and small. Um, and easy bite size. Uh, had a trick for There is a trick apples. to cut, uh, cut apples, actually. You can just cut around the core. Um, just make sure you don't have to dig the core out. I've seen people do that, but you just cut just around the core in perfect squares just to make sure you don't get any uh, that cord does tend, tend to be a little bit harder around the center so just cut around it and you're good to go and yeah all you have to do is just cut some smaller pieces mm -hmm. that way we have some bite-sized salad pieces to go into our delicious salad okay all right, yes. so what are, we're, are we tossing in first? The we're gonna, yeah, so we're gonna toss in all the ingredients okay. minus the toppers, and we're gonna make our own salad dressing. Okay. All right, so all these, the apples, onions? Yes, the okay. green onions as well. Apples. And you're welcome to use other onions. Red onions also work. Give it some color too. You can use pears in this instead of apples, which are also in season. Okay. Um, the cranberries can go in too. That'll give it some red color. That's about half a cup, and then half a cup of chopped almonds. You can also, use, I mean, chopped walnuts. You can also use almonds. Okay, so when you're shopping for your fruits and veggies, what's a way to help kind of stay on budget? I mean, I know prices are sometimes a little frightening at the grocery right. stores right now. Yes, they are on the rise, unfortunately. And a lot of my classes um, that I give out in the community are regarding uh, shopping on a budget. So um, we can always buy frozen. Frozen is fine. Some people are kind of intimidated by frozen, but as long as you cook it properly, it's, it's fine and it's just as fresh. Um, and also you can buy things that are out of a can. Um, can uh, vegetables and fruit just make sure you don't have uh, the, you can get the low sodium options um, and if you're getting canned fruit as well you can get the ones that don't have that heavy syrup so try to stay away from the the syrups and the salt that that might be in our canned food items and always buy fruits and vegetables that are in season so you can go into HEV and check out what's in season so all of everything here is in season our leafy greens our carrots our um, ca um, our pumpkins too so yes and so and th those are labeled right if it's in season, you should see that. You right? should see it. It should be front and center when you walk into HEB. It'll say seasonal vegetables. Can't uh, miss it. Can't, yes. Bright lights around it. Yes. <laughs> I, mean, I feel like sometimes it needs the bright lights, it right? Sometimes it does. To, sometimes to it can it. be hidden. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So besides, you know, we've got the salad going, but salad dressing, okay? Right. That's important. Tell us why. Okay. So as you know, you go into HEB and salad dressing, it's overwhelming. That whole aisle, right? Uh, so, and it can be really expensive too. So, and sometimes a lot of it is unhealthy. They put a lot of oils in there. And so I always tell people, especially in my classes, my seniors, make your own salad dressing. It goes a long way and you can get a mason jar or you don't even have to get a mason jar. You can make your own salad dressing in a simple bowl like this. Mm -hmm. um, so we're gonna make our own right here because we have control of how much sodium goes into it, how much oil. And so what we're gonna start with is the olive oil. So that's gonna be the base okay. in our mason jar. Okay. So that's gonna be Tell about a when. tablespoon. Yeah, Ooh, well, a little okay. bit. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. And then another tablespoon of balsamic vinegar. And you can use red wine vinegar too, just to give it some of that citrusy taste a little bit more. There yep, you go. There we go. Uh huh. And then Dijon mustard. So this is my go to salad dressing. This gives it a little bit sweet, salty kick. There you go. That's perfect. And then we're gonna add our seasoning. So we okay. have the oregano, a little pinch of that. You can use other herbs. You can grow your own herbs as well. Okay. And then some salt and pepper to taste. Just a whatever your heart Just desires a on that. There, there you go. go. And then you're gonna make sure that's nice and closed up so that it goes on top. Mm -hmm. And you just give it a shake. And, and that's your makeshift salad dressing. Because that's dressing. the thing, because a salad dressing, you said, may have olive oil in it, and people think, oh, olive oil is healthy, but they might put too much of that yes. in it, right? Yes, a lot of those already made salad dress. I know it's convenient, but they do have a lot of um, oils in them, especially, yeah, your not so good oils, too. So olive oil is one of the better ones, but try not to go overboard and make your own, right? Okay, and fruits and veggies daily for seniors should be how much? Right, so we should focus, especially seniors over the age of 55, uh, half of our plate should be uh, full of fruits and vegetables. So with, uh, with seniors, it should be two cups of vegetables and uh, one and a half cups of fruit. All right, thank That's you so much, Natalie. You can learn more about Texas A&M AgriLife on our website, salive.com. Just click the As Seen on SA Live tab where we've provided a link or scan.
scan the QR code on your screen. All right, well, from healthy living to staying active, Gonzaga Medical Group is helping seniors stay fit and happy. They're always offering some sort of fun activity at their Gonzaga event centers, and our Jen Tobias Dresky is out live at one on Pleasanton Road. Hey there, Jen. Hello. Yes, that's right. They offer all kinds of activities for seniors at the Gonzaba Event Centers. And today we're all about the calm place and the art of Tai Chi. And joining me now is fitness instructor Teresa Denise Schultz here to show us how it's done. And we have our lovely models doing some moves. But first, let's talk about the benefits of Tai Chi. Oh, there are so many benefits of Tai Chi. It's a uh, anxiety. Mm -hmm. It helps with that de-stressor. It helps with your balance, with your coordination. There's so many benefits. I'm gonna be honest, I didn't like it at first, but if you have a positive attitude going into something, it'll work. Yes, and I see back here, the movements are very slow, but that's slow the whole point, right? Can you show me a few? Yeah, we'll start with open the door. Mm -hmm. You're going to inhale, bend those mm -hmm. knees, and it should feel like whenever you're on a wave in the ocean, oh. just how you bounce up and down in that water, nice and slow. And it's important that you slow down, right? Would you oh, say? Oh, yes. Uh, I'm a Zumba person, let me tell you. <laughs> it took me a while to learn how to slow down and smell the roses. And again, it's it's all about keeping the balance. You mentioned to me earlier that you saw uh, people that have transformed and actually have better balance now from yes, doing these types yes, of moves, right? Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. It helps a lot with balance. And what other fitness classes do you offer? We have Zumba Gold, which mm -hmm. is Zumba, but we take out all the jumping and the twisting, mm -hmm. but you can still get a really good workout with Zumba Gold. Mm -hmm. We also have chair yoga and uh, we do not get on the floor with our seniors, but you are able to do poses and we do balance poses, things that are gonna help you. Mm -hmm. And what are they working on right now behind us? What are They're these moves? Embrace the moon. Oh, okay. So Tai Chi uses things from uh, nature. Mm -hmm. And so it's all in martial arts moves too. Why would you say it's so important to stay active for seniors especially? My motto is bodies in motion, stay in motion. Mm -hmm. So I have a couple of 90 year olds that come to my classes and they swear on if they would have stopped moving that they probably would be stiff now. Wow. But yeah, they move and they do all these classes. So, so staying in motion is key. Now what is your favorite? Because you mentioned the yoga, the Zumba, the Tai Chi. I love yoga, but yeah. Zumba is my number one. Zumba, okay, <laughs> yes. And these classes are free. How can, they if somebody free. wants to come and try a class, how does that work? Come to the event center mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and um, knock on the door or walk in and <laughs> you can join in. We'll, mm -hmm. we'll register you and you're in the classes. I'm sure, you, I'm sure you've seen people even uh, have some relationships that they've built maybe and more social oh, skills, yes, right? it helps with social skills mm -hmm. so much, especially during this pandemic time. And the classes aren't huge, huge, so you feel comfortable here. Yes, okay, yes. so I'm gonna learn a few more moves real quick. Okay, we're gonna do embrace the okay. move. Hand on top, hand mm -hmm. on bottom at heart center. Okay. And it's a shifting of weight. You said that's important, right? Like the yin yes. and the yang. The yin and the yang. <laughs> I'm probably not doing this right, but she's the expert here. Again, Zumba, yoga, Tai Chi, and you will learn all the health benefits and even of just the breathing part, right? Yeah. Oh, that yes. breathing is so important. Believe it or not, you get aerobic capacity with Tai Chi because you're doing diaphragmic breathing. All right, well, thank you so much. I'm trying to go slow here, but you know, I'm always fast paced, but they're so good. I will work on this. And Fiona, we, when we come back out here, we're gonna work on a craft because there's a lot more than just fitness here at the Gonzaba Events Center. It's, ladies, you're doing wonderful. Back to you, Fiona. I'll keep practicing, let me see. Okay. Thank you, Jen. Oh, it's good to see everybody moving over there. All right, still ahead, where seniors can get stuff with deep discounts. We have a roundup of several money-saving deals for seniors. And how to stay fashionable with things you already have in your closet. Fashionista Elsa Fernandez shows us how to create a capsule wardrobe that will save you money. That's next on SA Live's Gonzaba Medical Group Takeover Show. Most of our patients, they still don't have a designated primary care doctor, or they haven't seen a doctor in a very long time. So we encourage this so they can start developing a relationship with a doctor, whether it's a male doctor or a female doctor that they choose, so they can start working on their health. 